Video lecture six goes over scanner objects. This is from uh, sections 3.3 and 5.4, so please make sure you take a look at that or have the book handy. The scanner object uh, can be created by using the scanner class, which is gifted to us from Java. It's a multifaceted, very powerful class, which allows us to get input from a variety of sources. These sources can be the string, uh, just a regular string, or the console, or a file. And what we will do in this video is just take a little bit of a, a view of how the scanner does tokenization of the input from either of these sources. It does not matter the, to the scanner where the input is going to come from. It deals with it, with it exactly in the same way and has the exact same methods to do the input. So let's look at what, how we can create a scanner and how we can use scanner methods. Now, this source right here, the source right here is any source. It could be in the console where the user is typing in, it could be a file or it could be a string, which is there in the program and you can initialize the scanner with it or you can read it from some source and then create a scanner and initialize the file, uh, initialize the string. So here are all the methods that the scanner offers. And of course, there will be a lot more methods. You can look at the Java documentation. But for now, I wanted to start off with by looking at, just look at, let's imagine that we have a, a, a user input. The user enters one, two, all on the same line. Then the user goes on to enter three. This could be either user input or this could be input from a file. Regardless, as you can see, you've got two words on one line and you've got two words on the second line. The scanner completely makes all of the input into a single dimensional stream. And this is important to keep in mind. So what this ends up looking inside the buffer, so this is going to be the input buffer. And this stuff goes into the buffer and it looks like one space, two space, two, and then there is a new line and then followed by three, followed by a space and then followed by four, and then there's a new line. So this gets translated into this kind of picture inside the buffer. This is what we mean by a, when you read your book, you will find that they use a word called white space. So a white space consists of either a, just a regular, a single space, multiple spaces, including tabs, and then the new line character. And this is important for us to understand when we think about how tokenization is done. So the scanner pointer, if you will, is here at the beginning of the input. And when you ask the scanner to do next, then it's going to start because the scanner has no idea what you're going to input. All it knows is it has to keep pulling the input until it reaches a white space, right? So the way next works is that first, the scanner skips over white spaces. So if there is a white space, it will skip over it and then stops when it reaches the next white space. So see right here, there is no white space. So the scanner is going to say, all right, I have to start looking at tokens, start the tokenizing process. And then it moves until it finds the next white space. And then one becomes a token, which gets returned by the next function. And when, if we do next again, if we do next again, then it's going to skip all over all of these white spaces and tokenize this until it reaches the next white space, which is the new line character 
and then this one too gets returned as the next token. However, at this point, instead of next, we did next line. That would be completely fine. It would, what next line does, what next line does is that it returns all the input until the new line character. So this is interesting because if you did new line at this stage, it is going to go and return all of this. So it's going to return the space and two and stop right here. Now, if we did, if we did next after this, then uh, according to the next function, it's going to skip over all the white spaces and then create the token and stop at the next white space. So it's going to return th three. But if at this point we did next line, then the job of next line is to return all the input until the next line character. And therefore there's nothing here, right? There's nothing here, therefore it's going to return an empty line. And we will go over the example. So if we did the next line here, it's going to return nothing and then position itself right here. So this is the way tokenization is done. And this is important for you to know that if you mix and match, so if you mix and match next and next line, you have to be careful. All right, so let's go back to our slides. Understanding of what we can expect the methods to return. And if there is a mix up, then we know why the mix up is happening. But this is only for next and next line. We don't have these concerns or worries for next int or next double. And you can go over these methods and you've used them before that next uh, int returns to us the next integer, the next double, next double returns to us the next double. We also have has next, has next line and has next double as kind of safety net features where the scanner will, um, if we do next, then the scanner, let's say there's a number one, two here. If we do next int, it's going to go grab this token and return it to the user. So then this is gone and the scanner is now positioned here. But if you do has next int, the scanner is here and it inspects this information, checks to see if it's an integer format. If it is, then it returns true here. Um, as next int, it returns true. Otherwise, it returns false and continues to be here because input is not consumed by just checking. So these are a couple of things that we want to keep in mind when we look at the scanner behind the hood. All right, so let's go to the next slide. In fact, let's go and examine a program. Uh, let's do a new share and observe the scanner behavior. So I have a couple of examples here. The first example is how can we have a scanner read from a string? So in order to have a scanner, I have used java.util.star. I could have just done java.util.scanner, but star is the entire util library. Now I can initialize a scanner by passing uh, a string here. So this is one way to read information into a scanner. Um, what I would like to do is I would like to read uh, this as a string. I would like to read this as an integer and I would like to read this as a double. Keep in mind that all of this is embedded inside a string. Scanner is extremely powerful in that it can actually take a string, extract tokens from them and extract tokens of different types. So here, what I have is I'm calling the string a token. Account number is an integer, as you can see here, and balance is a double because this is in decimal format. So I set token equal to next.int. So hopefully token should now contain account number. And then I, I say if s dot has next int, then um, if it has an integer, read it as an integer and print it out. Otherwise print error. If it has a double, read it as a double and print it out. Now I'm going to comment out the rest of my code here. 
because I wouldn't want this to be confusing at this stage. And we'll move into this step by step. So let's run this program first. And so I see my account number and I see the balance. So I know that I have read this well. Now, if I change this, and if there's, some, if there's an error, for example, this was X, Y, Z instead of an integer. Let's run this program one more time. And now you say it says input type error and it doesn't print anything, right? Now uh, let's do one, two, three, and then let's change this just to 55. And let's see what happens here. Everything seems to be fine, even though we did not give a decimal. That's because we know that in, uh, as far as this Java is concerned, an integer is also a decimal. A decimal is not an integer, but an integer is a decimal. So let's try to change this and say, will this work? So you see, now it gives us an input type error. So if we go back, then everything should be fine as it is. Now I'd like to comment this section out. And so just to recap, scanner, the scanner that can read from the console. I'm going to say scanner console is equal to new scanner system dot in. This will help us read from the console. And what I'm going to do is show you how using so how we can use uh, the has next int in order to do input validation so what we're going to do is have the user repeatedly enter an integer and stop when the user is not entering any more integers and then give the total value so let's do this in the program It says, please enter an integer, I enter one, I enter two, I enter three, and then now let me enter R. So now my, scanners, my scanner has looked at R, it knows it's not an integer, that's a signal to stop, and then it, it has, in the loop, it has added all these integers together and gives me the total six. If I run this here one more time and and I say X at the beginning, then it says no more integers because I did not enter any integers. So this is a nice example to show you how you can use uh, scanners to create the has next and has next functions to create input validation and to do many different programs. So I'm going to comment this out and move on to our next example of how we can have a scanner read from a file. So I have a file called data.txt and I have six lines here. Now know that when a user is supplied a file, a lot of times we do not know how many lines are there in the file or how much data there is in the file. Sometimes the files can be extremely long, you know, uh, one gigabyte uh, can be the size of the file. So how do we deal with that kind of situations where the input number is unknown? Well, one thing we can do is keep a count. So I have, so I would like now the scanner to connect to a file. I do that by saying, create a new file, new scanner and connect it to a new file. And the name of the file is data.txt. But somehow or the other, I'm getting this red line here. And if you remember from your CSC 15, anytime we needed to do file IO, the first thing we needed to do was import java.io and also designate who is going to take care of uh, file not found exceptions if the file is either not there or Java is not able to open the file. So throws 
So it's a main program that's going to throw file not found exception. And here we go. Hopefully the red line should have gone. There we go. And so now we have, so now that is gone. We can open the file, keep a count because now we have, we are going to pretend we do not know how many elements there are. All it's going to do is it's going to read the elements, from, read the strings line by line from the file, print the line and keep a count of how many there are in all. And count is going to do that. So while the file has new lines, so you have not reached the end of file character, save the input line from the file into this variable called line and print the line and then count the total, increment the total. So let's run this one. And as you can see, this is the first line, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth line. One thing I can add at the end of this is system.out.println. There are and then add the count to this count lines, not lines, but lines. And let's run this one more time and hopefully our answer should be six. There are six lines. Now, this is a great way to read from the file and store the, and, and just print out the information. But a lot of times we would like to read data from a file and store it inside a database. And the simplest database that we have done in CSC 15 is arrays. So let's take a look, and this is going to be useful for your lab. So let's do this. Let's now save the scanner, save the count, save the line. But what we can do here is, I'm going to create an array of string, string lines, equals new string, and I'm going to say that there are 10. Now this kind of, this is hard coding. So this is hard, I've hard coded the number here. Know that I have 10 spaces in my array and I have six lines. So this will work, but, uh, we need to be careful because we do not know if there will be more. So let's now presume that there are seven, eight, and nine. And this is the tenth one. And we have 11. So we're going to exceed capacity here. This is going to be 11. Now, when I read from the file, I need to be sure that if my count exceeds 10, then I stop reading into the array. Otherwise, I'm going to overflow. And at the same time, I need to be sure that if I have less than 10, I also know that my array is not full. So count is going to be an important, a very important variable that tells me exactly when to stop reading and also tells me exactly how many elements I have in the array. So let's, let, let's uh, give this a go. And then what I can say is just copy paste this here. And while f dot has next line, now uh, what I'd like to do is not store it in lines, but store it in the array. And what I will do here is I will set count equal to zero. Count is going to serve as my index. And, and every single time I read an element, it's going to save it into that particular position in the array, print the line and increment the count. And at the end of it all, what I can do is I can, I don't need to print it out here. Now I can traverse the array and say for integer i is equal to zero i less than count i plus plus plus. 
and I'm going to say system dot out dot print line. Lines, uh, lines count, lines I. Now, if you remember, we talked about not overflowing. I have one condition here, but I know that if this is going to keep reading uh, all the way till the end of the file, and rightfully, I should get an exception. Let's see if that happens, and then we'll see how to fix that. As you see, there is an exception here. It says index 10 out of bounds for length 10. There is no index 10. We are only, when you create an array of size 10, the index is going to go from, it's going to go from zero to nine. It's going to go from zero to nine. And therefore, uh, this extra, this last one, this is going, the index is going to go from zero all the way to nine. So the first, second, third, fourth, and the 10th, but this 11th one is the extra one. And therefore this has given me a problem. Now, what I should do is I should build in a condition here and saying while you have it and count is less than 10, right? Read it. So let's see if this works. And there you go no exceptions, it's read all the lines. Here's a little uh, extra that I would like to add for the lab. What I'd like to add for the lab is, you can create your random rand is equal to new random, right? And I'm going to variable, but actually put count here. So then this one is going to go from zero to count minus one. And let's try to run this and see which line it actually picks up. So here is a random line. This is the first line. Let's run this one more time and see if you get a different line this time. This is the scanner that reads from the console. And we're trying to see what happens in the mix and match situation. So I'm just going to run it first so that you get a good look. So please enter a word. It's I say. And I'm going to say, hello. Let's run this one more time. I say, hello. And then, and then it says, please enter a line. It does not wait for me. Just displays the next line as empty. And then it says, please enter a, uh, another line. And I'm going to say, okay, next line. And then it goes ahead and prints it. So my expectation is that I should enter a word, enter the first line and enter the second line, but it's skipping over the, the first line and asking me to enter the second line. Why is that happening? That's happening and it's as expected because when I say, please enter a word and I enter the word, it accepts it, prints it, but when I say, please enter a line, it tries to take the next line, but what's happening here is that the new line that is there in the buffer at the end of this hello is causing next line to read the empty line, display it, skip over the new line character, and then go to the next line. So this is a case where I've mixed and matched next and next line, and that's why I was, I was skipping a line and getting these unexpected results. All right, so this is the end of this video.